talk to you today about Christian threat assessment. So make my way over the rock wall here. There are a lot of times in life when you will be faced with multiple threats and you have to decide which one is most important to go after. I'll give you a little scenario here, okay? You're in the woods, three men approach. One guy is running uh, very fast at you with an ax, looking like he wants to take you out or take your head off of its shoulders or something. Another guy is just kind of quietly standing there with a knife, just kind of looking a little bit crazed. He's not really making any forward movement. He's just there with a knife. The last guy is a, has a gangster and he's got the gun held sideways and whatever else and looking like he probably wants your wallet. Um, which one do you take out first? The guy with the ax, the guy with the knife, the guy with the gun. You say, well, obviously the gun's the most dangerous. Um, in the hands of a skilled, uh, you know, marksman, yes, that's true. But uh, the guy with the gun and he's holding it like this, you can't shoot a gun accurately like that. So you say, okay, how far away is the guy with the gun too? That's another factor. All right, he's, you know, a good 50 yards away. He's probably not going to hit me. Couldn't hit the broad side of a barn probably. So what about the guy with the knife? Well, the guy with the knife, he's just kind of standing there looking somewhat crazed with his knife. He's not making any forward progress. However, this guy is still running at me with the, the ax. Um, well, it's just an ax. It's not a gun. Yeah, but the gun or the ax can do a lot of damage. And he's got forward moment, momentum as well. He's running at me. Even if I put a round into him, um, he's still coming. Even if it's a fatal shot, he still can get a number of steps off and swing before he falls onto the ground. See? So put it down in the comments which one you would take out first in order. Axe, knife, gun. Or whatever. Axe, gun, knife. Or something like that. Just wanted to illustrate a point. Um, there are times, many times in your life, where you have a certain threat that's in your mind. I need to really take care of this situation. Um, and it might not be a deadly threat. It could be that, you know, you need to have your car repaired because it's getting kind of dangerous because you're letting this certain thing go wrong. And you say, I need to take it to the garage. But on the way to the garage, you actually encounter a bigger threat. That's what I'm talking about. So as a Christian, what do you do? Christian threat assessment. 1 Timothy chapter 1 going to look at some scriptures today. A little interesting Bible study here. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Uh, verse 18 through 20. It's always challenging out here when the wind's blowing. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. In warfare, there's threat assessment all the time. Okay, what's the biggest threat? That tank that's rolling over that ridge over there? The soldiers down in the valley? Or that airplane? Is it a bomber? Is it a fighter? Is it, you know, whatever? Threat assessment. You constantly have to be gauging different threats. Oh, there's somebody over there. Oh, this, you know, I heard a, some guy got hit or something like that, and I didn't hear the gun go off until a few seconds later. Uh-oh, we have a sniper. Threat assessment all the time. In the spiritual realm, it's even worse. As a Christian, verse 19, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Paul actually delivered two professing Christians over to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. I bet Paul uh, had better things to do than to deal with a bunch of false converts. I've had a lot of better things to do too over the years. But there are some times I just have to deal with a false convert. They're there, they're making problems and whatever else, and you have to just, okay, threat assessment, you know, Take care of the situation, you know what I mean? 
this doesn't do much good, you know, this is the thing that is needed to take care of that threat. Titus 3, Titus chapter 3, go there next. Titus chapter 3, verses 9 through 14. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Well, you said the word Jesus, and it's actually supposed to be Yeshua or Yahushua or something like this. Uh, and I can argue this point. They, did, they weren't using the J sound in, in Old English when it first came out. And it would have been a Y, so Yesus or whatever. And, and uh, the Greeks in it, okay, we get to the end of the day. Jesus and Yeshua, It's Jesus is the English word there. Yeshua would be the Hebrew word. What are you proving by that? It's a ridiculous argument. And you avoid it. It's a foolish contention. Uh, no, sorry. It's not a, it's, I look at your threat there coming to me saying I'm not a real ministry because I say Jesus and not Yeshua. I say Jesus because my King James Bible that I preach from and I call the Word of God, it says Jesus. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to waste my time on these people other than just to rebuke them and move on. I suggest you do the same. If you hold a Bible that says Jesus, then by all means say Jesus. Okay? Um, people that get into the flat earth thing. Start to argue over the, the shape of the earth. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about the shape of the earth. Well, it's a great and interesting study. Good for you. Glad it, it worked out for you. Whatever else. I don't care. I'm not going to debate and say that NASA is God's, you know, holy system or something. I'm not going to say in favor of NASA or with the globe earth or with this or that. I don't care. It's a foolish contention. I'm not going to mess around with it. People get all worked up about that stuff. The holiday issue. Oh, you celebrate Christmas, you're, out, you're outside of God's will, you're horrible, you're a Babylonian satanic. Shut up. Shut up, okay? That's not a threat to me. If I go out and I'm trying to witness to people and whatever else and somebody comes up and says Merry Christmas, oh, yeah, really? Okay, let me... Huh? <laughs> so bizarre. So bizarre. Older women, you know, so remember this little old lady the one time went to a... Uh, store and she was out there in the parking lot it was you know december early december and it was just starting to snow it's beautiful and she said boy it's starting to look a lot like christmas isn't it and i took my bible out and i slapped her across the face with my bible and you guys said heathen you know <laughs> no i didn't no i didn't she's not a threat okay not a threat at all People get their priorities all messed up. Start going at tearing down Christian ministries because they, you know, don't stand exactly in line with the things that are liberty in the Bible or not even really clearly mentioned in the Bible. Verse 10. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. These guys get into some of the weirdest things. Some of the, I mean, there are certain things that you should reject a heretic, and you should say, okay, you're using Greek to correct the King James Bible. The King James Bible is not perfect, but it's God's word. However, that works out, I don't know. Um, it's an imperfect copy of God's word. Then God's imperfect. Can't write a book. That's kind of an issue. Um, your God is not capable of writing a book without error. Uh, I'm glad my God's not that way. Um, some guy comes out and he says, well, actually, um, there is no such thing as dispensational uh, teaching in the scriptures. And uh, I believe that the church will go through the great tribulation and all these other things. Okay, uh, can I admonish you on that, brother? There could, uh, okay, no. Okay, maybe you're not a brother. I, I have to go away now. There's other threats out there, um, other things I need to take care of. You're no longer a priority. Verse 12, when I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Bring Zenus the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. <laughs> uh, 
I remember we quoted that verse one time, Liberty Baptist Church. And uh, we came in on a Saturday morning. We were going to go out. We wanted to go door to door. No, we can't this week. Why? Well, we have some things that we need to move from the downstairs up to the upstairs. We're going to be making one of the empty building or empty rooms here because barely anybody comes here anymore. We're going to be making one of those rooms into a library and maybe an activity room. And, and, um, and then we also have some mowing to do and some, some uh, landscaping. And if you, if you two guys could go over and scrape the floor because we have to put the new linoleum in. And is this really a good works for necessary uses? Or are we just becoming unfruitful? The latter, unfruitful. Uh, you start wasting your time. Just like you do when you start to pointlessly argue with people. You have to be careful to maintain good works for necessary uses so that you're not unfruitful. Threat assessment, you see what I'm saying? You have to look and you have to determine some things. Hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do some work for the Lord or something like that. I need to read my Bible. Let's see, where was I at? I was in, I'm actually going to read the book of Philemon. Dee -lee -lee -lee. You know, there goes your phone. Oh, uh, um, that's, uh, okay, hold on. Oh, it's so, so and so. I haven't heard from them in a while. Are they taking you away from reading the Bible? Hey, I like to watch your studies, Brother Brian. Uh, you know, it's really good stuff. I, Really love your sense of humor and, you know, everything else. Well, good, praise the Lord. Uh, but are you reading the Bible on your own? I hope so. I hope I'm not taking you away from the Scriptures. Ephesians chapter 5. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 20. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You have to think about it. What are things that are a threat to you that could take you away from God's will in your life? And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be thinking about the will of God. How do I do things that are good, you know, maintaining good works here for necessary uses, things that will get me rewards at the judgment seat of Christ? The you know, last study I did was about the thing of, you know, overcoming lust as a single man or woman. And part of that is when you get married, you have to do things to please your wife. I have to do things to please my wife. So I have to do care about the things of the world. Well, there's some threat assessment there. Um, this right here that I'm doing right now, preaching outdoors, there's some times when it doesn't work out. You know, it's... It's kind of sunny, but now it's kind of getting a little bit dark and dreary. There might be a little bit of a chance of rain. I might have to quit all of a sudden. Um, I like to do outdoor studies, but sometimes it's easier to do them indoors. But I said I was going to do some outdoor studies. That's why I'm out here. Um, but there's times when I have every intention of getting work done and something comes up. I have to get this done. I have to do that. I, you know, clean my stove pipes out um, so that they're ready for winter. My one stove needed to be repainted really badly. I repainted the stove. Um, you see, what's the biggest threat to me right now? Well, if I don't get this done, then this happens. Okay, you're sitting there, you're, you're cooking some breakfast or something in the morning, and you have your a pot of water on the stove there, and you say, I'm going to go start to listen to Brother Brian's video or whatever else, and you go in and you listen to that. About that time, you hear the pot boiling over, and you say, well, I'll just wait here till the end of the video. It's just another 10 minutes yet. <laughs> No, get up and run over and turn the heat off and get that water off of there. You see what I'm saying? We have to consider that. And I'll be, you say, well, this doesn't make sense. I'll be tying all of it together as we continue here with what's coming in the future. Because that's really what this whole thing is about. 
okay? But uh, where's the verse at? Verse 15, Ephesians 5, 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Circumspectly. How do you define that? Cautiously, with Webster's 1820 dictionary here. Cautiously, with watchfulness, every way, with attention to guard against surprise or danger. Um, is there some surprise or danger out here? Yeah, there is. Um, right here, I don't know if you can see that. I think maybe you see the top there. It's broken off a little bit. But there's a tree that fell down. Got hung up in this big birch tree right there. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of rocks right here where I'm standing, but there's a dead tree right there that sticking out a stump and there's a stump over there and there's one there I have to watch where I'm going and you can be walking along and I you know not paying attention turn and a stick can hit you in the eye and you know there's that and then there's you know there are some black bears in the area they usually leave you alone and some big bull moose and whatever else in the area they leave you alone usually too um threat assessment some trespasser could walk back onto my property and I have to take care of the matter Threat assessment. I feel safer out here than I would in the city, actually. You know, you say, oh, it's kind of dangerous out there. Well, <laughs> not as much as in the city with all that's going on. Um, you're to be circumspect. It's important. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. There's a few of those out there today. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, looking at all the stuff that's going on in this world right now, all the political stuff and all the things that they're coming up with, and the, trying to get World War III started and, you know, food plants being destroyed and, you know, the fuel pipelines being blown up and whatever else and all these different things and you just look at the way the world leaders are handling things and you think these people are insane it's almost as if they're trying to cause chaos and if you know anything they are okay and going forward brethren we're going to have to do some threat assessment you're going to have to think about some of that stuff yes we're supposed to be christians yes we're supposed to preach the gospel but what happens when food runs out? What happens when there's storms? When there's forest fires? When crime goes through the roof? What happens? You better start doing some threat assessment. I need to go out to my vehicle here. It's dark. Wait a second. Crime's been going up. Hmm. Maybe I better think about it. Maybe I better make sure that I'm armored up. Spiritually speaking, number one. Physically speaking, unfortunately, in some areas, that's also very important now. There have been times in the past, brethren, where you had to go everywhere with armed companions, with swords. Walking through an area like this, there could be thieves anywhere. Why? Because the history of this world has been one of warfare. And if you're not vigilant, you'll get taken down. You're supposed to walk circumspectly, cautious, vigilant, looking for danger. When you walk through the woods, you are looking down, make sure you don't trip any over anything, looking to the sides. What was that noise over there? I hear dog barking. Is that my dog or is that the neighbor's dog or is that some dog I don't know? Is that somebody on my property? You see, it's very important to be aware, to be vigilant. Why well, just, you know, read the Bible and it's just a, a wonderful thing. I avoid any kind of negative talk or anything else. Uh, that's not really being circumspect. You have to think about some things. Well, I believe the Lord's going to catch us out of here um, very soon. It's going to happen it's very soon. I mean, we went, kind of went past the September 23rd thing, so that didn't work out. We'll just have to try to make that for next year again. Um, but, you know, the uh, uh, maybe we can get some blood moon stuff in here or something. Well, you know, okay, that came and went. Um, but, you know, he'll be here any second now. We won't have to think about bad times coming. 
Um, the Lord's going to catch up his bride, but it's going to be right before the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe. I don't see much scripture that the, the church is gone and for 40 years there's nothing going on on the earth and then the Antichrist shows up 40 years later or something. I don't believe that. But let's continue here. Verse 13, wherefore, because of the wickedness and everything else, I mean, understand the world leaders ultimately want to kill you if you're saved and kill me. Think about that. Wherefore, because of that, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the attacks that they throw at the Bible. Shield of faith. No, sorry, just to live by faith. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always. Pray without ceasing, the Bible says. With all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds. It's a scary thing, going to prison for preaching the word. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We're supposed to be bold, brethren. You know, we shouldn't have fear of death. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. You know, hey, go to be with Jesus and that'll be, you know, far better than living on this earth and whatever. And you say, well, that's true, you know. So somebody comes up and, and they say, I'm going to kill you. Go ahead. I'm ready to die. Well, that's there. But there's another way to look at it. And that is, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight against this evil. I'm going to fight against these wicked things. And if they kill me, okay, fine. I know where I'm going when I die. You see, the Muslims, they take that, they stole it, and they perverted it. So if you die in holy war and jihad, well, then you get to go to paradise and fornicate with a whole bunch of different, you know, filthy whores up there, whatever. They say virgins, but that kind of doesn't work out uh, after the first time. <laughs> Not real bright, but, you know, they stole that from us. Why aren't Christians the holy warriors? Why aren't we the ones that say, I'm not afraid of these laws that you're passing. They're wicked laws. They go contrary to the word of God. You're trying to take control of my body and tell me what I'm supposed to put into my body. That's not acceptable. Well, you better be quiet or we, we might have to come and force you to do things. Go ahead and come after me. Hey, pray for boldness to be given to me. I'll pray for boldness to be given to you. I hope that we can stand and fight. But if we're going to stand and fight, brethren, we need to know what the biggest threat is. Don't ever forget that the Bible teaches in Roman, or Revelation chapter 17 and 18, Mystery Babylon, a city that reigns over the kings of the earth. Don't ever forget who that is. It's Roman Catholicism. Well, but Brother Brian, we, we have immigrants coming across the borders and they're coming and they're stealing our stuff. And the law won't protect us. Hey, Brother Brian, we have people coming back onto our property. They stole things from us. They cut our catalytic convert off, converter off of our car. We can't afford to replace it. Hey, Brother Brian, I was at the store the other day. I came out my my window was smashed and they took my belongings. Yeah, those are threats. And sometimes you have to take care of those threats. Sometimes you have to say, you know what? I have to, Lord, I'm sorry. I have to take care of this situation right now. Hey, Lord, I have a flat tire. I wanted to get there and, and I was, we we're going to go out and do the street ministry thing or something or going to go pass out gospel tracts and I have a flat tire. Don't get in the car and drive with your flat tire, okay? You'll ruin the rim of your car. Don't do that. Sometimes you have to take care of the situation. But don't make, just make sure that you don't start to invent things that are more important than doing the work of the Lord. Make sure that you don't do that. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I cannot tell you how many times I've been frustrated by, the, by this exact thing, the thing of threat assessment. I had a plan to do whatever. And all of a sudden, some other thing comes in and 
oh, that original plan gets put off and put off. You know, going back to the original analogy, you get the, the guy with the gun and, the, and you get the guy running with the axe and you get the other guy just standing there with a the knife. And you go, bam, and bam, you take out the guy with the axe first, you take out the guy with the gun second, and you point at the guy with the knife, and he says, hey, I was just trying to see if you wanted this knife. I was sorry I didn't mean to freak you out or something. Oh, it wasn't a threat after all. But you don't know. You always have to be vigilant, always have to be ready to fight. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7 and our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, and so much that we despaired even of life. Could we be facing things like that in the future, brethren? Unfortunately, yes. We might be, what's it say there? Pressed out of measure above strength. In, <clears throat> in so much that we despaired even of life. It could get that bad. Verse 9, But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. <laughs> How about that? The hope of the resurrection, in other words. We had the sentence of death in ourselves. You're going to die because of sin. The wages of sin is death. Nobody gets away from that. Unless you get caught up. Hey, uh, the Lord says, Brian, uh, your time is going to be a year from today. Okay. I can't say, well, nah, hold on there. That's not fair. I haven't done anything wrong. and That's not fair. Okay. If that's my time to go, then I'm ready to go. Try to get as much done from now till then. Verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that the, for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, and more abundantly to you, word. For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge, and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. As also ye have acknowledged in us in part, that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus." We're supposed to go through some bad stuff, brethren. But you know what? We can encourage each other through that. Um, I really wish I would have had an easier time in ministry. <laughs> I, I'm very weak that way, very carnal that way. Um, I wish I would have made lots of money so that I would never had problems and struggles with money. I wish I would have had a nice house right away and everything else. I still don't have a nice house to live in. Um, I wish I'd had no vehicle problems and... And people send me books and I get right around to reading their book and there's just everything just smooth sailing. Um, but then what kind of an encouragement would I have been to you had that been the case? You come up here to this uh, property here. You come up to visit me sometime and we're walking through the woods and you say, you hear a, over there you hear some sticks cracking. You say, what was that? Oh, I have no idea. You know, I, I don't come out here very much. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, there's a, there's a big bull moose and he looks like he's going to run this way. Something's wrong with him. He's got some kind of, there's this worm or whatever that they can get into their brain and it makes them act really nuts. Yeah, he looks like he's going to run this way and kill us. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever, just turn your back on him. He'll, he won't, you know, he's running, but you know, it'll be fine. No? You want to say, okay, here's what we need to do. All right, get over there behind the tree. Get in behind the tree. If he comes at you, just keep circling around the tree. He can't knock the tree over, you know. If it's a big tree, you know, get in behind the tree. I've seen, saw a video the one time of a guy that the moose got so, big bull moose got so close to him, he was behind a tree. He reached over and smacked the moose on the nose, <laughs> you know. Um, they're more big, dopey, curious guys than anything. They're not real ultra dangerous unless you get them in the wrong time of the year, unless something's wrong with them. But my point is um, threat assessment. 
You want somebody who's been through some things to be able to assess the threats for you. That's one of the reasons I'm here. It's one of the reasons the Lord's put me through so much. So that I can be an encouragement to you. And think of it that way, brethren. God's putting me through this stuff so I can be an encouragement to somebody else. Have you lost a loved one? You say, yeah, it's been really rough. Okay, maybe there's a, somebody out there that needs encouragement in the future when they lo lose their loved one. Have you been robbed? Well, maybe you're supposed to have that happen to you so that you can be an encouragement to somebody else in the future. You see what I'm saying? Um, we have to constantly be thinking about that stuff. Galatians chapter 6. Go to Galatians chapter 6. I'll begin in verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Don't talk big, okay? If you're not a, haven't been through much spiritual warfare, then uh, don't think too highly of yourself. Um, Get a little bit older first before you start to say much. Um, verse 4. But let, it, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another, for every man shall bear his own burden. God does something unique with each of us. Not one of us is going to be able to say we each have the same exact life experiences and same things and whatever else. We all have to assess the threats in our life and act accordingly. And sometimes you might try to take out the wrong threat. And the one that you didn't think was serious ends up getting you. And you fall into sin. You, you get messed up or something else. And you think, oh, that was a big mistake. I should have never done that. That was a dumb decision to make. You have to bear your own burden, you see. You have to learn. That's what the Christian life is all about. Learning. And learning often comes from failing. It's not always through success, brethren. Sometimes you will fail. You'll fall flat on your face. You have to get up. Verse 6. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. But let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. It's a conditional clause. You will reap, you'll be rewarded someday for serving the Lord, if you faint not. If you get your eyes off of the biggest threats, and you, don't, you pick the wrong guy to shoot, you come out and you say, okay, here's the problem in life. Boom. As I said earlier, you know, um, people that are attacking the King James Bible, I'll go after them and I'll attack them. I'll use the sword of the Spirit and I'll hit them. Hey, here's some guy and he's saying that Jesus Christ is a, a, the second person of the Trinity. Oh, okay, yeah, there's no scripture on that one. No, he is God. He's holy, completely God. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Fight the fight. Here's a guy that says you should be going to a church building. There's no scripture for that. Clang, clang, clang. Well, here's some guy and he says that uh, Christmas is some kind of a horrible satanic thing. And if you take part in it, then you're a Satanist and you're not right with God or whatever. Well, you know, and, and you start to go after that threat, what you perceive to be a threat. And in reality, the devil's coming up behind you. And he's going to get you. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen brethren that just say, yeah, terrible relations or terrible things memories and whatever of christmas growing up it was awful <laughs> i don't even waste time on it anymore you know you do whatever you want brother i do whatever i want had a guy come to my house the one time and you know viewer and things and which is fine and, and he came and he said i was raised catholic we did a lot of weird stuff at christmas it was a terrible time i disagree with you you say it's okay you know you like to do it whatever fine you're my brother in the lord that's it i'm not going to have anything to do with the Christmas thing. Fine. That's fine. 
But when I have people turning against this ministry because I'm not rabidly anti-Christmas like they are, that's a problem. That's a big problem. You aren't assessing the threat properly. You see? And I've known, like I said, I've known a lot of brethren that just say, ah, don't waste time on Christmas. For me personally, eh, I can take it or leave it. And I choose to leave it. Um, not a big deal. But I've seen other guys, they get so off on that issue. It just becomes the central part of, you know, they just get so miserable at Christmas time. And the lights are evil, the, everything's bad and all this stuff. And then they start to question people's salvation based on that. And it just, it all revolves around that. And the, the flat earth thing is the same thing. People get into studying that stuff and then they're off they go. And man, if you don't preach flat earth, there's something wrong with you or whatever else. Chapter and verse, please. Where did anybody in the New Testament judge somebody else's salvation based on the shape of the earth? It doesn't matter. You're off on the wrong threat. Do you understand me? Um, verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Um, try to do good. Good works for necessary uses, brethren. Um, if you're doing a lot of things that are foolish and you're wasting your time, um, and you're fighting the wrong threats in life, uh, you're going to find very quickly that you will fall and you will fail. And I don't want that for anybody out there. Um, so in closing, it's kind of a weird study, I realize, but uh, I, it's something I've been thinking a lot about because um, it's very frustrating sometimes when you're in ministry. And the uh, Lord called me into this ministry many years ago. And um, there have been so many times I've said, I'm going to bring out a study on whatever. <laughs> And I never do. And people think, oh man, it must be lazy or it must be whatever you think about me. I, don't, I have no idea. But understand that it's about threat assessment, brethren. Um, you know, I was going to be doing some of these studies. And uh, I said this in another, I think one of the live streams that I did. And we have this shelter logic thing that we keep some of our stuff in. Have to keep the snow off of it and whatever. Well, it developed, it was starting to get a little bit thin on the one side that faces the sun, the south side of the shelter logic. And you could see the tarp was kind of starting to get a little bit thin in some spots. Well, here it developed a tear. And we had a really windy day about a week or so ago. And it just went and just ripped the whole one side that was down and flapping inside the whole thing. Had to get a tarp and put it up over it. And I was going to do the studies. These studies were going to be done, but the stuff inside was getting wet from being rained on. What do I do? Well, you know, okay, I can't do the work of the Lord right now because I have this other thing that has to be done. Again, you might not understand that if you don't live in, you know, a country setting. Um, hey, you're, if you have livestock, you're going to leave and go to work, and all of a sudden you realize that the fence has a big hole in it and all your livestock's escaping. You don't say, well, you know, I'll get that some other day. You know, no, you have to go over and take care of that problem. All right. Just the way it is. Um, there's all kinds of things, brethren, that we have to continue, continue to be, uh, what's the word? I'm trying to think of what the word was. I can't think of it right now. Circumspect. We have to be, you know, circumspectly, as the Bible says, there's a Bible word there. You have to continue consider some things and be vigilant and come going forward brethren into what's coming in the future nuclear war famines uh fuel going to the point where you can't even afford it the internet could be shut down uh, they could do power outages black you know rolling blackouts um grid down in other words there's all kinds of stuff you have to think about the threats you have to assess what is the biggest threat to me as a christian right now it's going to be very important going forward. Um, can I rely on this family member here? Uh, no, I think they're turning on me. You know, I don't know about that. What about my job? Can I, I still okay at my work here? You know, you're going to have to think on your feet, brethren. And going out there in the public and whatever else, there's a lot of really weird people. And I don't mean just goofy, you know, 
wearing a strange hat or you know weird shoes or clothing or no i'm talking people that are on drugs again remember that there are some things that kind of have a little shelf life so to speak shelf life of insanity and people are well beyond the expiration date if you know what i mean <laughs> um i mean I, I see people and they're just you know uh and you say hi how you doing i mean you know they are literal zombies and you just kind of think you know and and i've heard some people i've actually seen people that they're just and somebody will say can i help you and they'll go uh, and they're not down syndrome or whatever you know it's just there's something that went really wrong up there and the stories of crime and all the other stuff we have to be vigilant brethren and it's funny because in the end times Vigilance is something that's mentioned over and over again. We have to be careful. We have to think. And, you know, the Lord is going to catch up the body of Christ. Again, I do not deny a quote-unquote pre-trib rapture. It's the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble is the proper way to say it. I don't deny it. But the problem is when you believe in this imminence thing where it could just be at any time, you're walking around just... Oh, I think it's going to happen today. I think it's got to be this year because after all, um, 2022, that, that means two times three is six. So that's the number of man. So therefore, 2023, oh, that would be the seven. The seven, yes, that seven is the number of completion. And therefore, and, you, and you're going around, oh, he's coming back. And it, it has to be this year or something. I wish it would be this year, but I think we have to get closer to the time of Jacob's trouble before the body of Christ goes up. What does that mean? That means we need to be vigilant. Be vigilant. Oh, there's a threat right there. Hey, get back, get back. Oh, there's one over there. Which one's closer? Which one, which one do I need to take care of first? Hey, this is threatening my family. Hey, this is threatening my income. Hey, this is threatening my beliefs. Hey, you're not allowed to speak against uh, perverts anymore. This guy here is a pervert, and he wants to go in, and, and uh, your little girl just walked into the bathroom there. And this pervert says that I'm, I identify myself as a woman today. I need to go in there to the bathroom. Uh, no, pervert, you don't. No, you don't. That's a threat. Threat assessment. There's a Christmas tree over here and some older woman looking at it and there's a pervert going to go into the bathroom as my little girl just went in there and there's some guy over here looks kind of shady he's looking back and forth and, you know looks like he's going to steal something threat assessment brethren don't go punch out the old woman looking at the christmas tree you know hey this pervert just walked back in there i better do something about that to protect my little girl this guy over here he looks kind of shady i might want to say something to the security guard as i'm going into the bathroom to take care of this pervert Okay, think about it, all right? Um, for those of you that uh, wonder why I don't get to certain studies after I said I'm going to, because of threat assessment, brethren, uh, there's been many times somebody sends me something and I think, oh yeah, I have to do a study on that or whatever. Some other big thing comes up and I'm just saying, what do I do? You know, I have, I have to get to this study now or whatever else. Um, that's the way it is. Okay, um, I don't have some kind of a nice little cushy ministry that never has any bad things happen or whatever else. That doesn't happen. So, I don't know if you can see my dog back there. Oh, there he went down over the wall. So, it's nice having a dog because then he can warn me about some threats too. He can bark at things. Although he usually barks at, you know, mice and, and uh, shrews and things like that. Um, so, uh, that's going to be it for this study. Um, just really wanted to put that thing out there, brethren. Um, we are to be vigilant. We are supposed to look and see what is a threat because there's going to be a lot of them coming up in the future. Um, we're being attacked on every side. And you can't run from it. You can't cower from it. You can't say, I don't want to fight. You know, if I leave them alone, they'll leave me alone. No, they won't. The devil doesn't do it that way. Um, you have to be ready to fight. And we should have the, the greatest motivation to fight because we can't lose. You're fighting for the Lord's cause. 
they kill you, you go right to heaven. All right? Don't let a bunch of filthy Muslims take our promise from us. We have the promise of eternity. They don't. Okay, that's going to be it. We will see you in the next video. And as always, thank you very much for watching.